uh, build change up. Yeah, and we see that immediately that massive health regeneration coming out from Dyrus. Really, you know, digging on that possible Wicked Influence build, but uh, getting the double rejuvenation bead as well as some potions. Then Chris starting the standard uh, Cloth 5 potions. Yeah, so this is actually the first start we've seen in this tournament where they start double rejuvenation bead and health potions. And uh, this is an entirely new style of playing, you know, it's it's probably, it might emphasize a little less on, like, the straight up brawling and a little more on, you know, getting in, I guess, brawling more often. So having more, right. more fights, not as much as just going all in one fight and expecting to win that, but being able to do better when you're fighting multiple times in a, you know, expanded amount of time. Yeah, and, and knowing that in these multiple fights you will, you know, eventually come out on top through your health regeneration and your ability to constantly, your endurance in the fights. So it's more emphasizing endurance over the short short distance um, kind of fight. Yeah, definitely. And so as far as skins go, we see the Battle Bunny Riven coming out from Dyrus and the Championship coming out from Chris. I think Chris has been using the uh, Championship Riven all tournament, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I believe that... Uh, that skin's uh, pretty pretty rare at this point. I'm not I'm sure about the like the specifics about like whether you could use that outside of the season two world championship, but um, like I know that some skin codes are going for around 200, so that's a pretty prestigious skin. But like just we just got to see how uh, maybe some of these skins will pick up in prices. Like you know buying some of these skins after the player whoever wins the tournament, whatever skin they're using, we might see a bunch of purchases in that area. Yeah, we should talk about getting a, a Leaguepedia Best Ever 99 Riven skin or something. Only I know, I think, honestly, I think that every champion should have a Leaguepedia skin, but, I mean, that's just me. Yeah, I probably agree there. So, uh, you know, both players are going to start Q again, pretty standard. You know, one, one thing is, Dyrus only gets three health potions compared to the five, but when you account for all the health regen he has, he's not going to notice that much. Um, he's going to be more than happy with the amount of health regen that he already has without having those extra two potions. Right, and it's almost real-time health regen, like right there. You saw the little itty bit of health that Chris knocked back on him, immediately just, uh, swoop, right back up to, uh, right to full. And uh, I think that's, just, it's so cool to see, like, how much health regen he has that it's actually actively regening in real time. Yeah, definitely gonna be cool to see. So you can just see his health bar just going up really fast when he takes any amount of damage. So they both hit level two around the same time, but Chris is having those pots to be rolling. Dyrus is not has yet to pop a potion, uh, you know, and Chris is losing out in these trades, so he's gonna have to use those potions. And it's, like it's it's looking it's looking dangerous for Chris if he does have to pop more of those potions. Dyrus will have that natural regeneration. Yeah, and uh, this regen looks like it's definitely gonna come in handy here. So, you know, Chris has the Ignite, which might, you know, fend off some, but it's just going to keep on going past the Ignite. It's not like a health potion where there's a limit. It's going to be constant health regen throughout the game. And we actually did get confirmed from Wicked that I was correct when I said that it was Wicked's strategy. And Wicked did indeed tell Divers to use the strategy, and that's why we see it here in the tournament today. So Wicked bringing some of that uh, best of an EU influence over to <laughs> North America. Yeah, and uh, Chris, you know, going in on Divers here, he's getting in some damage. Uh... Brain Dyrus a little bit lower than he actually is, and they are both out of potions, but, you know, the Dyrus Reju bead, essentially, uh, a consistent, very low power potion. Yeah, and so both players are level 3 here. Chris is fighting in a lot of creeps, um, but it looks like he's gonna be okay. Even Dyrus was very close to dying there. But, you know, that, look at that health regen coming in. It's just, he's already at one bar. He's just regening and regening, so... But I think he's gonna probably go back here. It seems like the right choice uh, to just go back to base and you know get some items and you know, maybe pick up the, the cloth armor to match the uh, cloth right. armor that Chris has. Maybe grab the Doron's blade. Maybe grab even you know just a red pot and health potions. You know, there's tons of options he could go for. Right, and Chris going in for the brawl here. He gets Darius extremely low. One more hit I think would have done it, but I don't. I do. I do believe his Balor was still on cooldown. So Chris is going to have to farm these creeps up. Dyrus is going to go back, so we'll see if Chris is going to go back or try and push out this wave a little bit more. Yeah, and so Dyrus does go back and buy the Dewan's Blade with some more health potions. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Chris does. If he's going to go for that Ninja Tabby again, or if he's going to offer maybe a Red Pot or a Blade or something like that. Or, you know, we haven't. I don't think we've seen a Brutalizer all day. We've seen the components of one, but I don't know if we've actually seen a game go on long enough to where a player can actually buy a Brutalizer. So, 
Right. It might be interesting if this game goes on long enough and players can, you know, start getting into their builds. I don't know about stream one, but definitely on stream two. We haven't seen many late game, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, games go sure. on. So no bloodthirsters, no brutalizers, no last whispers. And I think, you know, there's a certain amount of starting items and early game items you can go that we're going to see. And obviously we have this new wicked strategy coming in here this game. But, you know, as the game goes on, there's there are more and more options as the players get gold to what exactly they can build. And we'll start seeing some crazy variation if these games start going to late game. And I think that, you know, of all the players competing in this tournament, Dyrus and Chris, are, it's probably a safe bet to, uh, to you know, be one of the games that goes to late game because both players are just so calculated and don't want to mess up, don't want to make any mistakes. They're not super aggressive like, like I'm a cutie pie or something. They're just, you know, they're playing to win, they're going to play safe, that kind of thing. Yeah, and we see Chris kind of adapting to that health regen strategy by picking up a Reju beat of his own and just immediately going in for that brawl with Dyrus, even within the, within the, like, despite the fact that Dyrus is a big creep wave, you know, fearlessly attacking him and then backing off knowing before the creeps start attacking him that he can get in as much damage as possible. So, uh, you know, it, that regen beat is going to have to come in handy for him, but at the same time, Dyrus is lacking that armor. So a lot of these uh, instant trades, Dyrus will lose out in. So if Chris can all in him and get all that damage out, you know, in one fell swoop, I think he will come out on top. On the other hand, Dyrus has hit six first, so we'll see if he does uh, try and get that ulti down, get that damage on, down now to cripple Chris in terms of his regen. Yeah, and so, you know, Chris picks up this rejuvenation beat. Uh, I don't know how much I like that pickup. You know, with Dyrus, it was kind of like the double rejuvenation beat star. The rejuvenation quince comes in with a you know big advantage. But I'm not sure what exactly spending 180 gold on that rejuvenation beat single is gonna do for Chris. You know. Right, and I think it was more like he saw uh, he saw the idea and kind of thought, hey, that's a good idea. Maybe I should try this. So it we may work out for him. But uh, Chris popping his ult here, going in on Dyrus, getting the night down. Dyrus's barrier is popped. Uh, Chris bringing him low. Oh, Chris getting a break, waiting for the barrier to break. Dyrus getting Chris very low as well with his wind slash. Like, both of them waiting for that barrier, being patient, calculated, knowing how much damage they needed to do, bring them low enough to get that wind slash off, but neither one able to finally finish off their opponent. So. Yeah, and this is just the close calculated play we can expect in this matchup. You know, both players have played top lane. They both have a nice feel about how much damage they can take, how much damage they can do. You know, Dyrus, he doesn't really have as much of a feel for how much damage he can do, not being a huge Riven player. But, you know, in his time playing top lane, you know, he spent years and years playing the game professionally on Team Solo Mid. He's gonna have, and, and even in solo queue, he's gonna have to face Rivens every once in a while. So he still has an idea of, you know, what our spells do. He's played her a few times. He's got some light experience on Riven and against Riven. Whereas, yeah, and you know, it's an underst Chris, w Chris would have more, but then Dyrus has, you know, the experience of years of professional League of Legends play on his side. Right, and the understanding right there coming in, Chris, despite being lower health than Dyrus, Dyrus backed off knowing that he would take a lot of damage from that Broken Wings auto-attack, Broken Wings auto-attack combination. He knew that he would lose out on that trade despite having more uh, effective health than Chris. Right. And Chris does get a nice uh, key burst off there, and a little bit of harass, but still, these players are just remaining so even on health. And I think, you know, Chris is pretty much winning these trades, but... You know, what's keeping Dyrus in it, even though he's losing these trades, is that all that massive health regen. So you'll see, they'll be at equal health, and you check back 10 seconds later, Dyrus is going to have more health because of all that regen he has. So he, right. he's, he's getting close to one, you know, one half HP right now, whereas Chris is just over there with no health potions and no regen, and kind of, you know, he's just SOL with low HP, there has to farm under turret. Right. And if you look at farm, Dyrus is actually quite a bit ahead of um, Chris in terms of farm. And that's really going to show when they do go back to buy items. So, I think when the uh, I think it's a good decision for both players to stick around rather than go back. It'd be more beneficial for Chris to stay, but it's almost a double edged sword. He stays, Dyrus regens more health. Um, he leaves and tries to buy an item. Dyrus plays in a bigger item, but we see a brawl right here. Chris getting taken out by Dyrus because Dyrus does have that more effective health right there. But he, I think he realized had he gone back.